Hello. In this video, I'm going to show you the derivation for the formula GPE is equals to negative GMM over R. So, according to definition, the GPE is stored in a pair of masses M and M when they're separated by a distance R. It's the work done by the external force to bring that small mass M from points at infinity to that position there. Many students will straight away ask, why is there a need for the external force? Isn't there already a gravitational force? Isn't there a force of attraction between the two masses? You're right, exactly because the gravitational force with accelerated small m towards big M, we need the external force to act as a braking force so that the small mass m does not accelerate so that it does not pick up any Ke as we moved it from here to here. So should we evaluate the work done as simply the force times the distance no, we can't do that because remember the gravitational force follows an inverse square law. So as the mass is moved towards the big mass M, the gravitational force also gets stronger and stronger. And because the external force is there just to make sure that the small M does not accelerate, so the external force must also become stronger and stronger as we move it towards the big mass M. So how strong must the external force be? That's easy because we know that the gravitational force follows exactly GMM over R squared. So the external force must match the gravitational force at every position. So the external force at every position is also GMM over R squared. Now let's translate this English sentence into a mathematical expression. Uh, if the external force was a constant force, then the work done would simply be the external force times the distance, right? But because the external force is not constant, so we have to do an integration over the distance r. So we are bringing it from infinity to the position r, so we'll be integrating from infinity to the position r. We know that the magnitude of the external force is exactly gmm over r square. What do you get when you integrate gmm over r square? You get negative gmm over r. Put in the limits, so we have negative gmm over r minus negative gmm over uh, infinitely large number. So negative gmm over infinitely large number is of course uh, 0. So we get the expression that the GPE is actually negative gmm over r because this term here is 0. In the A-level examinations, they are not going to make you do any integration, but instead they will test you the same concept graphically. So instead of integration, they'll be talking about the area under the force distance graph. So for example, the area under the graph from the point at infinity all the, all the way to, to here, that means this shader area here, this shader area will correspond to the GPE stored between the two masses when they are separated by this distance here. Alright, so likewise, if you want to figure out the GPE stored between the two masses when they are this distance apart, well, that will have to be the, this larger shader area here. Alright, that's all. Ta-ta!